What's up everybody? I know this video has been long awaited and we're going to go over it today. Um, we have covered the main Pennsylvanicus colony quite a bit here in the past couple months. We have also covered the new Pennsylvanicus queen in the past couple months. Now it's time to give an update on the Campanatus castaneus colony that everybody's been waiting for. I know this particular species isn't covered very much on YouTube, so we're going to go over that in this upcoming video. All right, everybody, welcome back to SNE Ant's YouTube channel. I hope you all have been well and having a wonderful week. Uh, if you've not already watched, I did give a little sneak peek of this uh, particular ant colony last Friday uh, with a short, and I've told you guys before, if you don't watch them, the shorts are very updated. Uh, this video is actually going to be very updated because I'm recording this quite early. So this is going to be a really, really recent video. So just a quick recap. Uh, like we said in the intro, Maine Pennsylvanicus colony is here. The new Campanatus Pennsylvanicus queen is here. And now we're going to go over the Campanatus castaneus colony that we have. So these are the three species that we're keeping. I've mentioned in the other videos, I plan to keep a total of five. So these are three of them. We have two more species we're going to keep. Um, I'm actually going to leave that up to uh, probably you guys, but I have two species two species I'm, I'm thinking about keeping. Um, I definitely want to harvest a ant species. That's something I've kept since I was a kid. So that will be one of them. And then the last one, well, we'll kind of have to figure it out. So this is my entire setup. If you're not familiar with it, I got my ant nests. I got my heat cable. I got my honey, water, my liquid nectar back there, my vacuum to clean out that we did last video, and then scissors. And then I keep my uh, live feeders in this. So Let's go over and check out the Castaneus colony. Now, I am using um, a record boom, I guess you could call it. like a. So we're going to loosen that up so we can get some angles. So this is the Campani uh, Cap excuse me, the Campanatus Castaneus colony. Now, as you can tell, their uh, nest is a little bit dirty. Um, I do need to clean it. Uh, but because of the way... Um, these ants have grown actually um, it's getting a little difficult I have to slide the glass off and kind of get in here and get all this mess out um, as you can tell there's a lot of space in this nest so they tend to put their trash in the bottom here um, and really don't utilize their outworld which is on the front and I'll show you guys that in a second so uh, sorry for the shakiness let's see if we can study this a little bit and get a little bit of a zoom in so if you can see in the center of frame that's the queen now if you don't remember um, I actually got this queen from Tar Heel Ants, um, Mac. I bought this queen with five workers, and now we are over, I would say, probably 50 um, by now. Uh, this, this particular colony has done really, really well. Um, not as well as the, uh, the actual main Pennsylvanicus colony. I got these two colonies about the same time, and I guess it's um, depending on genes. But this particular colony has exploded. You can see all of all of the uh, uh, Pennsylvanicus back there walking around in the in the background. But the Castaneus colony, I, I have noticed, grow a lot slower. Um, I do not have any majors in this colony yet. Uh, they are all just workers um, and nothing nothing special. So we're gonna kind of go over this nest. I'm gonna give it a good little clean out. Um, give them some water and give them a little bit of food while we go over this video and you guys can tag along and watch but the queen is doing great as you can see she's sitting on some brood back there i'll see if i can get in there yep right there sorry but there we go it's a little blurry because of the zoom but she's doing great um i've told you guys in the past and i will continue to say it this particular colony is one of my favorites because of the coloration um you know you can't get any better colorization in uh cast um, excuse me, Campanata species. You can with this color a little bit, but uh, the Castaneus are just bright red. Some of them are golden. So uh, let's go ahead and start um, opening this nest up a little bit and clean around. I'll catch you in just a second. All right, so these are the tools I typically use when I'm cleaning a colony or um, giving them food. I usually kind of do this all in one. Um, I kind of want to show everybody how this kind of works, but um, I use two types of feeders. I use crickets from a local pet store, not a big box store, it's a local um, pet store that sells crickets. 
and then I also have um, a thing of mealworms that I feed them also. So uh, we're kind of going to go through this and show you the steps I use. Uh, the first thing I do is just kind of pick out a couple mealworms. Now this is also, keep this in mind, this is depending on colony size. So you know with a colony this big you don't want to give them too much because they'll go to waste. I usually just pick two you know somewhat sized um, mealworms in here and just give them a little prep. You always want to, and this is what I've done for every colony, every single colony, you know, cut up the millworm. It gives the ants a lot easier time to uh, feed from them. They don't have to fight. You know, these millworms being in the fridge um, are in a hibernation state is what I was looking for. So they do and will, you know, come back to senses after they warm up, but I don't want them to kill the ants or to harm the ants. So that's not the goal here. We want to kind of, we're feeding. We're not, you know, you, there is a time and place for live feedings, uh, particularly in my main Campanatus nest. I will live feed every now and then. I try not to do it a whole lot because again, we're trying not to uh, harm the ants. And some of these feeders can, you know, harm the ants. They can kill them, they'll bite them. Um, so what we'll do is, We'll take the top off here and I'm not really worried about these ants getting out. Um, I do and have put a barrier of flu on the inside and this particular nest has a, a, a lid that is, let me see if I can get it in frame for you, but it goes over this lip so it pops over the lip right here if you can see. Um, so the flu on's on the inside so these ants actually don't really give me trouble of uh, getting them out but what we're going to do is bring their food cup out, kind of empty it out and then just put what we just cut up millworms inside of the food you know and again you know if you're a newer ant keeper this is a great view to watch and kind of see how other ant keepers feed their ants but if you're experienced you know how this works you know you cut up your feeder throw it in the cup or a dish or something just to keep your outwork a little cleaner and then just plop her plop it right back in um now these ants don't really come out a whole lot and i'm gonna see if i can oh you got a good good shot of the outworld but i'll just stick this back in here kind of like this and let the ants come out and feed on their own. Um, there is one dead Castaneus ant here and I'm pretty sure this is one of probably the originals. Um, this nest is over a year old now and see if I can get her in frame. So you can see, let's see if I can get you guys a good uh, focus on that. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, the camera's not really working with me. So anyway, um, but there's one dead worker, you know, nothing too crazy about her looks like again just just age um this, this colony has been in here for quite a while so there's this is about time for them to start you know especially the original workers that start um dying off but what i'll also do is fill up their nectar um and their water is in the nest mate that tar hill ants provides for their nests so this actually um, i'm going to fill this up as well while we're in this video but you know just unscrew these i give the nectar a good little shake kind of the sugars like to settle at the bottom, so you want to give these a good shake. Oh, you can actually see one of the workers out now. Oh, they already know they're getting fed. And they can probably sense, um, and if you don't know this, ants can sense air pressure difference. So they probably have the air pressure difference, but she's over there in the cup. So we're going to fill this up just a little bit. Kind of get this topped off here. And you kind of want to do this once, once a week. Um, I'm not going to say feed your ants once a week, but you kind of want to go through... Um, at least once a week make sure your nectar water or your nectar is filled make sure your water is filled and you can see she's already um, eating a good, good shot on her she's already feeding in on that so that's good that means they're eating and they're gonna feed their brood and again I've mentioned this in other videos protein is for the brood nectar waters for the ants uh, they feed the uh, now they do use the protein a little bit but a majority of the protein goes to the brood and a majority of the Nectar water or sugar water goes to the ants for their energy. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna zoom back out here. And what we're gonna do is um, fill this nest mate up. Now, the first thing you wanna do when you fill these nest mates up, let me uh, orientate the camera so we can kind of swivel, is make sure there's no ants near the nest mate. So all these ants kind of stick to the bottom of the second level. And again, they have plenty of room to expand. So this nest will be quite set up for some time. I'm actually don't have to worry about this nest. 
uh, actually the other ones I do, which is unfortunate, but um, taking this made out, I would watch this hold, but because they don't really worry about this too much, what I typically do is I'll take an extra plug from Tar Heels, just stick it in there, that way they don't get out. And then he also supplies you guys with these syringes. So I use bottled water, I've preached this in the past over and over. Um, what we're gonna do is just stick the syringe in, get some water out, suck it into the syringe. And you know, this doesn't necessarily need to be super full. Um, we'll set the water off to the side here. Take the nest mate, and what you can do, cover your thumb up on this end. Now take your take your cap out, fill it all the way. Just give a little bit of space at the end. Stick it right back in like this, and now your nest mate's good to go. See, completely full. So we'll take this top off. Hopefully, there's nothing underneath, and stick the nest mate right back down into the nest for them. Now I'll stick the access water ahead back in here. There we go. And then put the top on and we are done with the water and the nectar. So we'll stick these two off to the side and then start cleaning the nest a little bit is what we're gonna try to do here. So they're inside feeding a little bit, which is great. I've already given you one shot. Another ant I think came out, but she's in there, she's eating. So that's good. She'll tell her sisters here shortly that there is food in the nest for them. So that's what we want. We want them to eat, kind of occupy them. So we'll put the top back on. And now that that's all done, we can scoot the entire nest back. And I'll give you a good shot of the, um... oh yeah, there are two. So they're drinking the nectar. I don't know if you can see this right here. You can see her stuck in. Let's see if I get my finger here, right there. So she's in there drinking while her other sister's in there eating. So this is, like I said, the, you want to um, put new nectar in here as often, you know, at least once a week. The, the sugars settle in these uh, particular feeders. So you want to always give them um, fresh nectar because the sugar settle in them or the water will settle in them and it's not the, the right ratio that it's supposed to be. So you always want to give them at least once a week a, a new um, a new feeder full of nectar so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to uh, maneuver this in a position where you guys can see what I'm doing so uh, yeah let's see if we can get you set up so we can see on the inside all right so now you guys can see on the inside and I'm gonna show you how I clean these nests out as best I can so the goal here is not to disturb the ants so much and like I said earlier they do sense the air pressure difference so as soon as you crack these nests open, they're going to freak out. They're going to think their nest is being invaded. Um, they're going to think that something's coming into their nest. As you can see here, I know you can't, but right here, their sisters are uh, feeding each other with the trophallaxis. So they're telling each other right now. Let's see if I can zoom into that just a little bit. Kind of give you guys a glance of what's going on there. Oh, they just stopped. But they're feeding each other. So they're, they're going to be preoccupied telling everyone that there's food outside. So uh, while, we're, while they're doing that, and again good opportunity they're kind of preoccupied doing that I'm gonna try my very best to clean this now they are gonna get a little upset with this um, because they again think somebody's invading the nest so I'm gonna scoot the nest back just a little bit out of frame so I can get my hands in here but what we're gonna do is I'm taking the top corner up here and all I'm doing is sliding this top corner up I'm not sliding both of these up that's not the goal we want to caddy corner it open just like that and you can watch what happens here. The ants will get upset a little bit, so just keep that in mind and, and go slow. You want to kind of brush as much of this mess out as possible. Um, there are tons and tons of... So again, they're a little rowdy now, so we're going to give them a second. Um, they, like I said, they, they, they sense the pressure difference. And you want to keep these as clean as you can. There are a lot of... Uh, silver tails in here. I think that's what they're called. They're called silver tails, and you can see them all on the bottom, right through here. They look like little, little grains moving around. But what they'll do is they'll eat the dead organic material inside. You can see them in the video right there. Silver tails. They don't harm the ants. They just eat the dead stuff the ants can bring in, and you know silver tails are everywhere. So you know wh whether you get 
um, feeders or anything they're gonna come in so don't freak out and you'll see why this is this is why this napkins here so I can brush everything on this napkin and throw it all away um, I don't want these everywhere again everybody doesn't want these uh, silver chairs in their house so um, keep them on a napkin when you're cleaning them out you can kind of brush this stuff out and uh, just throw it all away at one one swoop so again we're gonna open this up yep the ants are gonna get a little little upset at this um, they are defending their nest but we don't want them to swarm out that's not the goal here okay we do have one out which is okay he'll go back in and again I've told you guys in the past before keep your cool that's the entire goal here you don't want to freak out and take this whole glass off or drop the nest not, not the goal here so but they are biting but I got a majority of the trash out that was the goal here so what we're gonna do is slide this back a little bit and then clean off the lip and you can get these um, featherweight tweezers off of Tar Heel Lance website too where you can just go order some off Amazon um, I told you guys Amazon is a good source for getting um, ant tools so again if you haven't seen that look in the description below I have a lot a list of ant tools I use um, and also if you need to order any ants you can go in there too so what we're gonna do is now that we've cleaned everything out um, we can throw this whole napkin away you don't need to worry about anything so we'll be right back all right guys so that's gonna be the end of this video um, as you can see I'm giving you a nice shot of the actual nest itself um, you can't see the queen because she's tucked in back here, but you can see a little bit of her back here. She's got that huge, uh, where the wing muscles went in, you can see her right there. But I get a lot of questions on this particular uh, nest and this particular species because, again, it's not covered on YouTube a whole lot. So I wanted to kind of give everybody an update on how this colony is doing. Um, I, I personally don't see a lot of uh, videos of them out on YouTube as well. So, uh, and this kind of gives you a little insight of how I clean these nests. And what we can also do um, while we're in here is kind of fill up this hydration or humidity chamber right here. Um, and again, you just take your syringe and fill it up. I don't know if a lot of you, a lot, hopefully a lot of you are familiar with this. If you're not, this is a little secret. But Mac always puts an insert on the side of his nests. And I can show you that insert right here. So it looks like a little hole, and it's technically what it is. Um, and this syringe will go into this little hole right there, just like that. And it, what it's gonna do is, it's a little tube that feeds the humidity chamber down here. And we, you, Campanatus don't, you know, it depends on the species and the subspecies, but some of them like humid nests, some of them don't. So what we're doing here is I'm, in, I'm injecting the water into this uh, humidity chamber and it's actually empty um, some some Campanata species like very dry nests um, since these are wood ants um, they tend to be in dead or dry wood so just keep that in mind you want to again like I've told you guys in past videos match the um, the nature of these ants uh, in the wild as much as you possibly can but we're gonna fill up a little bit more of this humidity chamber right here and I don't know if you guys can see that but you see the water rising and that's all I want in there we don't want to hold you know I, I usually fill these about halfway you do not want to fill them to the brim because you do not want to make too much humidity inside the nest if you do that a lot of folks will see that their colonies will evacuate the nest and end up in the um, outworld it's typically because either one the nest is too hot or two there's too much humidity inside of the nest. Keep that in mind. If you ever have a queen or a colony that evacuates the nest and goes into your outworld out here, it's because one of those two reasons. The nest is too hot, or two, it, it is too humid. You don't want that. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda tie this video up. I don't wanna take all you guys' time today. Um, as you can see, the top is actually pretty clean, but um, this, this particular colony is doing really well and what we're going to do in future videos is I'm going to get uh, because these and I think I've said it before these particular nests don't have names um, so what I'm, we're going to do is I'm going to make a video dedicated to that and give all of you the chance to name these colonies now I've said in the past and I will say again my fiance my wife has actually named the queen of this nest and this nest so the queen's names are off the table but the nest, the colonies themselves are not named. And what we can do is we can name them as a, as a community, 
um, all of my community, all of you guys, you guys are great. You comment in every video, you like all of these videos, um, and I, I'm, as far as I can tell, you guys are enjoying everything that you, you've seen. So what we're going to do is we're going to designate each one of these names. I'm going to print off a sticker and we're going to stick them on the nests, our world, and then on the nest, the names of these colonies that you guys put. So, hope you guys enjoyed everything. Hope you learned something today. Uh, that's the goal here, and hopefully everyone got an update on the Castanese colony that they wanted. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Have a great week. Hey, SNE Ants here. If you enjoyed this video, check out this recent upload of this recommended video. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button in the middle of the screen. And if you liked what you just watched, hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. If you have any other suggestions or ideas, comment down below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.